Canto 1. At one point midway on our path in life, I came around and found myself now searching through a dark wood, the right way blurred and lost. How hard it is to say what the wood was, a wilderness, savage, brute, harsh, and wild. Only to think of it renews my fear. So bitter that thought, that death is hardly more so. But since my theme will be the good that I found there, I mean to speak of the other things I saw. I do not know, I cannot rightly say, how first I came to be here. So full of sleep, that moment, abandoning the true way on. But then, on reaching the foot of a hill which marked the limit of the dark ravine that had before so pierced my heart with panic, I looked to that height and saw its shoulders, already clothed in the rays from the planet that leads all others, on any road aright. My fears at this were somewhat quieted. Though terror awash in the lake of my heart had lasted all the night I'd passed in anguish. And then, like someone laboring for breath who, safely reaching shore from open sea, still turns and stares across those perilous waves, so in my mind, my thoughts all fleeing still, I turned around to marvel at that strait that had let no living soul pass through it till now. And then, my weary limbs a little rested, I started up that lowly scree once more, the foot that drives me always sent the lower. But look now, almost as the scarp begins, a leopard, light and lovely, felt and quick, its coat displaying a dappled marking. This never ceased to dance before my face. No, on it came, so bothering my tread I'd half a mind at every turn to turn. The time, however, was the hour of the dawn. The sun was mounting in those springtime stars that rose along with it, when holy love first moved to being all those lovely things. So these, the morning hour, the gentle season, led me to find good reason for my hopes, seeing that creature with its sparkling hide. Yet not so far that no fear pressed on me, to see, appearing now, a lion face. This, as it seemed, came on and on towards me, hungrily, its ravening head held high, so that in dread the air around it trembled. And then a wolf, and she, who seemingly was gaunt yet gorged on every kind of craving, had already blighted many a life. So heavily oppressed my thoughts with fear, which spurted even at the sight of her, I lost all hope of reaching those heights. We all so willingly record our gains until the hour that leads us into loss. Then every single thought is tears and sadness. So now with me. That brute which knows no peace came even nearer to me and step by step drove me back down to where the sun is mute. As I went, ruined, rushing to that low that had before my eyes been offered one who seemed, long silent, to be faint and dry. Seeing him in this great wilderness, to him I screamed, Misery! Save me whatever! Shadow or truly man you be! His answer came to me. No man, a man I was long ago. Of Lombard stock, my parents both, by Patri, were Mantuin. I was born, though late, sub Lulion. I lived at Rome in good Augustus's day, in times where all the gods were lying cheats. I was a poet then. I sang in praise of all the virtues of a Chesian son. From Troy he came, proud Ilion, raised in flame. But turn your back. Why seek such grief and harm? Why climb no higher on that lovely hill? The cause and origin of joy shines there. So can it be, I answered him, my brow in shy respect bent low. You are that Virgil, whose words, a river running full, flow wide. You are the light and glory of all poets. May this serve me well, my unending care, the love so great that's made me search your writings through. You are my teacher, you, my lord and law. 
For you alone I took the fine-toothed style that has already brought me so much honor. See there, that beast, I turned because of that. Help me, your wisdom is known, escape from her. To every pulsing vein she brings a tremor. Seeing my tears, he answered me. There is another road, and there, if you intend to quit this wilderness, you are bound to take. That beast, you cry out at the very sight, leads no one through who passes on her way. She blocks their progress, and there they all die. She by her nature is cruel, so vicious she can never sate her voracious will. But feasting well is hungrier than before. She couples a mate to many creature, and will so with more, till at last there comes the hunting hound that deals her death and pain. He will not feed on drosh or cash or glint, but thrive in wisdom, virtue, and pure love. Born he shall be between the felt and the felt, to all the shores where Italy bows down, here chased Camio, died of wounds, Turnus, Ilias, and Nissus too. He'll bring true health, hunting that animal from every town, at last he'll chase her back once more to hell from which NVIDIA has set her loose. Therefore, concerning what's best for you, I judge that you should follow, I should guide, and hence through an eternal space lead on. There you shall hear shill cries of desperation and see those spirits mourning ancient pain, who all cry out for death to come once more. And then you'll see those souls who live in fire, content to hope whenever that time comes. They too will be among the blessed choir. To which, if you shall ever wish to rise, a soul will come far worthier than me. I must, at parting, leave you in her care. Reigning on high, there is an emperor who, since I was a rebel to his law, will not allow his city as my goal. He rules there, sovereign over every part. There stands his capital, his lofty throne, happy the one he chooses for his own. Poet, I answered, by that God whose name you never knew, I beg you, I entreat you, so I may flee this ill and worse, that you now lead me on to where you've spoken of, to find that gate where now St. Peter stands, and all those souls that you say are so sad. And he made a move, and I came close behind.